Manchung. 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 Yes. Who is? Would you call a photographic artist? A photo artist, I guess. That's a photo artist and photo artist. Commercial assistant. Commercial assistant. Yes. So which one? Which one is more? The, the um, dominant. Dominant at the moment. Um, photographic artists or visual artists. Visual artists. Yes. Right, I'll, let's go back a little bit. So you you graduated Queensland College of Art. Yes. In, back in in the middle of two thousand and one. And then you started assisting. I started. Well, I, I moved to Sydney. Couldn't find. Couldn't get into the industry in Sydney. So I, and I found work as a chef in a Japanese restaurant. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, and then because I was working night the night shifts, so during the daytime I was sort of applying for work at studios. Didn't get any, but I got a lot of work shooting for street mags. Oh, okay. Like so that. Editorial stuff. Yeah. So during the day I was working at a restaurant at night, and then during the day I was shooting just for myself and doing my own projects. And then I moved back to Brisbane. I think it was God two thousand and two or so two thousand and three. Yeah. But I, but I started working for an animation studio as a background artist. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they were just moving into Photoshop, into the digital realm, and only Photoshop. So I was adding in kind of colours and shadows and textures in the background plates of animations. Oh, cool. Yeah. And also, I, I guess, were you headed to picking up assisting work with, while you were... No, that was full time. But then oh, the work was... um, sort of drizzled out because we were working on a Disney production. And then the series ended after a few years. So I started looking for assisting work. Who did you start assisting for? I think I started assisting for Les first. Les Dixon, yeah. Yeah. And then Aaron. Aaron Tate. Aaron Tate. And then Nadine. That's sort of how it started rolling. Eric and Williams. I did that, yeah. Did that for like about, I think, almost five years. Being on Constant Call. And- on Constant Call, yeah. And then started working for Eric at Meta and everything like that. Oh yeah, and then I think after five years I moved to London and actually worked as a photographer there for almost six years. Oh wow! Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I was, how was London working as a photographer? Well, I was because um, that was also the time when web shops were booming. So I was web shops. Web shops, yeah. Like okay. you know how people were selling products on online. Oh, online shops. Yeah. Online shops, yeah. And I started working for a vintage clothing company in London who started a web shop. So I was doing all the photos for their um, shop online. So they would bring in hundreds of products every day. Oh wow. So I would start photographing everything from like clothing to homeware to shoes to everything. That that sort of encompassed vintage stuff. So was- and I was also doing sort of their sort of lookbook every year online. Oh wow. So that was quite so then, how, yeah. how long were you there for? Six years? Uh, about six years, yeah. Six years. But also during that time, during my spare time, I would engage in projects, like um, social photographic projects I was interested in. So stuff like, because um, there's a big community of canal yeah. um, boat residents who live on the canal system in London. So, and then at the same time, the Olympics were coming. So they were all being sort of shafted to one side as I was doing the portraits. So I was also combining the portraits with stories of how they were affected by the Olympics as well. So you put together an exhibition for that or? Um, no, I was included in just a few books that sort of studied the effects of the Olympics on sort of people around the cities that the Olympics were in. Wow. But at the same time, I was also um, invited to be a facilitator for one of the um, Olympics legacy programs, which sort of foster youth through photography. So I was doing that, so I saw sort of both sides of the story that the not so good side of the residents getting pushed to one side because of this mega games and then this other side where they're funneling money into trouble youth to help sort of give them kind of confidence and skills as well. In London was just, you were just non-stop. Yeah, because I was, I wasn't 100% sort of satisfied with Sort of because it was, could we call it the McDonald's of photography where yeah, they give products. you a couple hundred products and then you just keep shooting? You know? So I was constantly seeking projects that I was interested in. 
Because then when you came back, what were you looking at? Two thousand. When I so my one visa got rejected on the sixth year. Oh. <laughs> so I decided to travel for six months, just around Southeast Asia, and that's when I kind of slowly got more interested in alternate ways of living, meaning ex- existing in this sort of like social system. So and that's when I stumbled upon plants and nature and realised how important it was, and that's sort of my. Oh, which is your current pr- project, my current which practice, is... which is nature-specific um, visual arts. When you, if you're not assisting and doing other work, you're doing that. I'm doing that, yeah. So applying for grants and applications and exhibitions to display that. So yeah. how obviously that because this is as you've gone through the whole basically uh, got a degree. Yeah. Try, worked assisting, tried to go to Sydney, done this overseas. Did, oh, I forgot. Done. I went to New York as well. Oh, you sort of between York, that, oh my god! Between that, because one of my friends um, started a representation um, studio that represents photographers. Oh, yes. oh wow. So she told me to go over there because she really liked my work, and she was going to represent me. But, but I realised when I went there and got involved in all the meetings and all the dinners and lunch meetings with folios and everything. I was just sitting there tuning out going, I don't want to be in any of this. <laughs> like, so you, so you really, you've really crossed over and be put, put your foot in or had a try at so much of yeah. the industry. It's incredible. Yeah, it, it took going because it... I've, so the last, the last 17 years, basically, you've gone and tried everything. Yeah. Cause it's, no, I don't like that. It's always like a, I guess a maybe generally commercial photographers dream to go to New York and get represented and shoot yes. America and I had a toe in that and I went to the epicenter of that and realised I don't want to be any part of this <laughs> and shooting wise anyway I'd be the photographer and then came back to Brisbane came back to Brisbane <laughs> oh my god when did you come back I was I think from memory end of 2014 or I think yeah sure. years I've had Last, so when I came back from New York, I decided specifically to concentrate on creating um, nature-based content in an arts context. Which is that man... Manoir. Manoir. So, Manoir, which is um, my brother's wire, and we create sort of visual art together of floral, sort of nature-based content. We had a couple of exhibitions. We worked with quite a few botanic gardens. So one of the first major ones we did was... Um, Sing- Gardens by the Bay in Singapore, which is a oh, wow. kind of like a modern yeah, style yeah. botanic garden. So we did a book for them as well. Oh, that's so that, that's sort of where it started rolling off as well. And then in between that, you oh. in between that, I still assisted and sort of did my own shoots and worked other jobs. How do you see the photography industry now as to when you started? Specifically in Brisbane? Well, I guess in Brisbane, but you, you've been around everywhere, so uh, obviously there's, there's a lot, you would have seen some change. Yeah. Because it used to be quite specialised, meaning you had to know, because it was shot in film and everything, because I, I came from the days of film. So, yeah. But nowadays, I can see anyone can pick up a digital camera and call themselves a commercial photographer. We don't necessarily have the skills of the technical lighting skills, but you can have amazing Photoshop skills and cover up for the lack of that skill, which is may, maybe making it a lot harder for those skilled commercial photographers because they've got the years of experience to back it up. But because of the price difference, clients will usually see the price as go, oh, they're really. So, do you think it's too bad you, some of the. In a way, definitely. They, we, people's become more Photoshoppers instead of photographers, like getting it right while you shoot. Like the computer has really given rise to this whole new genre, maybe you call it, of photography where everything is fixed up in Photoshop. We're doing Photoshop. You know, photographers coming out of things like College of Art and everything else now, opposed to when you did, mm. and the pathway they take on and getting into the industry, and are they still doing, going into assisting and everything else? I think so. Like, it's a good sort of path to, to learn the skills, technically. But because of the digital age, there's so much other mediums to promote yourself. You can just get you know, an Instagram account, a Facebook or whatever, and LinkedIn promote yourself. And you don't 
really, you can, but you don't really have to sort of go the traditional path of leaving uni, assisting for five years and then start a studio. Yeah, yeah. sort of circumventing a lot of that and going, just, just going straight to shooting. Yeah. yeah because, because they can, because you can see the results as you shoot on screen. Yeah. So the, because I remember back in the film day, you know you got the shot in the film, but you're still kind of like sitting there and developing going, God, I haven't got the shot. <laughs> you know, even though you kind of know you got it. Whereas now there's there, yeah, it's the instant gratification. The instant gratification. Do you think the quality of images coming out now is better or worse? That is just oh, more. That's a, that's a tough one because I guess it's very subjective, but then what? Well, there's so much Photoshop work done to so all these photos. Like, I don't know. Like, so you don't really, know, you can't really tell. You can't really tell. You know. So, like, in terms of technical skills, I think that's slowly being diluted because why bother go learn lighting skills and buy expensive lights when you can? I can just add light here in Photoshop. <laughs> you know, and maybe that's when the skills and technical skills of photography it's getting lost bit by bit unless you assist a commercial shooter and really learn the techniques of you know because I've been on shoots where you shoot cars trucks and boats and you know well, it, this is it you've seen the full range of skills with the people you work with because I know yeah. those guys and they, the latest one coming in is now we're having to do video yeah that's another thing like photographers are now expected to know how to do video records now so that's another kettle of worm that's opened and also clients have now expectations of just wanting to shoot everything really fast, really quick and sort of, you know, shoot maybe a shoot that would have taken a couple of days back then. They probably try to squeeze it down to one. What have you, come, what have you got coming up for yourself? What have I got coming up? What's next? What else? What else? Man. Hmm. I've got a series of workshops I'm doing for um, Q Music called Big Sound. Oh. So that's to sort of collaborate with the organisers of Splendour in the Grass to do workshops to produce like kind of art specific content for festivals. Oh wow. And so they've got workshops on projection mapping and projection large scale specific content, which is something we want to move into. Uh, how do you uh, find these projects to work on? You're searching um, through contacts, yeah. through through contacts and also um, expressions of interest. But the more you do, the more people know your work. So hopefully what we're working towards is slowly, instead of us applying for things, which we probably we'll always do, is people will start going, oh, hey, we know where they do this day. They call us instead. So because we spend a lot of time applying for grants and writing applications. That's a bit of an art form. Mm. The language yeah. you've got to use for grants is very... Well, it's similar to photography because people think you shoot all day, but shooting is probably only like how many percent? <laughs> the rest is like putting yourself out there, making calls and producing the shoot and budgeting and everything like that. Okay, so well, like going on the paying bills aspect then, photography mm. as a career choice, you know, are you, you know, is it, do you think as um, viable a choice now as it was um, 20 years ago? I think... Anything, if you got the drive and are willing to ride it out, so there's a high percentage that you will succeed, but not all the time. Do you think there's a bit of a downturn about it? I think maybe there is because studio. I mean, it's like the budget is getting smaller and smaller. Besides those few big shoots that only maybe selective photographers are chosen for. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. And also digital, because they just say a magazine, like, oh, they can just give a digital camera to their, to their journalist. They go, hey, take a few snaps, where it used to be a photographer will go to the journalist, take a few shots. I think it definitely helps to educate the client, but at the end of the day, the client's bottom line is, is saving money, making profit and the budget. So wherever they see you're going to cut costs, they will cut it and just, just unfortunate with the sort of this digital tsunami that photography is, whatever is happening to it is, you know. Because that's the thing. I mean, yeah, there's more imagery out there now than there has ever been. Yeah. But not necessarily that good. And, and, yeah. But also there's these devices like mobile devices like iPhone and everything. Like, 
the, the apps on there is amazing. Like, the photos you take are amazing. And also, things are moving to digital, like web and stuff. Like, I think print is slowly... And unless you... Unless you're printing, these mobile devices are amazing just for digital content. So do you think, but basically, given, given the devices and everything else, mm. do you think probably one of the keys for photography is our ability to light? Yeah. Because you, you, if you hire a commercial photographer or a professional photographer, you're going to get predictable results every time where if you're not hiring a professional, the results might you know, vary here and there. You're not going to get something specific you want. Because you know. lighting, which fuel artwork and everything else, mm-hmm. and your, your flowers in it, are you, you're lighting those? Yeah. So it's a form of like, kind of light painting, which I probably wouldn't have refined that much if I didn't work at a photographic studio because working in all the different studios with different photographers, I've learnt that, you know, different light reacts, different surfaces and textures and that really translates into the main sort of visual art stuff that I do now. I'm doing assisting that the, all the skills and lighting techniques I learnt, I've somehow managed to squeeze it down to this one kind of lighting technique that I've refined with my art and it all stemmed from that. So, so basically it was... It was almost like I was... You had to go through all these steps to get to where you are now to be able to create what you're creating. Yeah, because without it, I don't think I can get that quality of imagery I have now because you have to have a good grasp of an understanding of lighting and how it affects different objects and textures and transparencies and stuff. So it's now, it's, you're now producing work that basically is... So your work has progressed over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, unknowingly to this point. <laughs> that makes me really strange.